All right, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the ninth of our 10 part series, Conversations with the College. My name is Greg Fansler, and I serve as Executive Director of Engagement and Alumni Relations. And welcome, thank you for being here with us today. Um, we created this series, Conversations with the College, to give alumni the opportunity to connect with and hear from our college deans and the Vice President of Student Affairs. Now, our deans and, and the Vice President of Student Affairs are excited to share with you what is happening on campus today to celebrate some of our recent achievements and to, and to paint the picture really for what the future holds for Missouri State. Through our conversations, our senior administrators have illustrated the impact alumni and friends have had on their respective colleges, academic units, as part of our Onward Upward campaign. Now this impact uh, translates into new buildings and scholarships and professorships and professorships and much more. Uh, so thank you all uh, who have supported Missouri State throughout the campaign and for tuning in today to hear from our ninth college dean. And that is Dean Julie Masterson. And I'd, before I introduce her and bring her onto the program, I'd like to thank Angie Rowe, who's our Advancement Strategic Communication Specialist, and she's helped design and create and promote these events uh, as part of our series that have taken place through March and into April. Thank you, Angie. So I would like to bring on Julie and, um, and, and introduce her and give her a little bit of an introduction. Um, when I do and finish and turn the program over to her, as you're listening to Julie's presentation, um, please think of questions that you may like to ask. And you're welcome to type those into the chat or the Q&A function. Um, we'll get to them when she's done in approximately 20 minutes and, um, and have that conversation with the opportunity for, with opportunity for you to dialogue with her. So um, Dean Julie Masterson uh, serves as Associate Provost. She is the Dean of the Graduate College and Professor of Communication Sciences and Disorders at Missouri State. She currently serves as Chair of the Master's Committee for the Council of Graduate Schools and is on the advisory boards of the Missouri, of the Missouri Science and Technology Policy Initiative, Education Testing Service, formerly the GRE, and ProQuest. Julie served as chair of the Midwestern Association of Graduate Schools, as a trustee for the American Speech Language Hearing Foundation, and as a vice president for research for the American Speech Language Hearing Association, and as chair of the National Advisory Committee for CSDCAS, the Centralized Application Service for CSD Programs. Julie received the honors of the Association from American Speech Language Hearing Association in 2015, from the Council of Academic Programs and Communication Sciences and Disorders in 2018, and was named one of the region's most influential women by Springfield Business Journal in 2017. It's our pleasure to welcome Dean Julie Masterson. Julie, thank you for being with us this afternoon. Um, please um, take it away. Well, thank you so much, Greg. I am so excited to be here with you today to talk to you about what's happening uh, in graduate education at Missouri State University. So I'm going to share my screen. I hopefully sharing the right screen. Hopefully everybody can see a wonderful picture of uh, Associate Dean Algerian Hart and I walking along with Bailey, uh, one of our recent graduates uh, for uh, a master's degree in communication sciences and disorders. Actually Bailey's uh, owner, Brittany is behind and she's the one who actually got the degree, but Bailey was a big part of that. Um, so we're gonna have, uh, I hope a really good time today as we talk through what we're doing, but first I just wanna make a pitch for graduate education. I think most folks know about the individual benefits of having an advanced uh, degree, higher income, better health, stronger networks. But did you know that there are public or societal benefits of individuals who hold graduate degrees? Professional expertise, most healthcare fields, to be a doctor, you have to have a graduate degree. To be a speech language pathologist, you have to have a graduate degree. To be a mental health counselor, you have to have a graduate degree. So all of these things contribute to our community. Valuable discoveries are made by graduate students. Did you know that the post-it note was uh, discovered by a graduate student? Vaccines, um, many patents were discovered and uh, ultimately held by graduate students. The economic spillovers, not only are individuals making a higher salary, but because of this, they pay more taxes, require less public assistance, et cetera. 
because of their discoveries, additional jobs in the community are created. And then finally, individuals with graduate degrees tend to engage in their community at a higher level. So more philanthropy, more volunteering, more civic participation. So the bottom line here is that getting a graduate degree not only benefits the individual himself, but also she contributes in really meaningful ways to the community. Um, I wanna to talk to you about how graduate education got started at MSU and the progression of graduate education. Thanks to our historian who knows everything that's ever happened about this university, Scott Carter, he sent me these great clippings of uh, what happened in the papers when MSU started uh, graduate programs in the late 60s. In this picture, you see uh, Dr. Art Mallory, who was MSU president or SMS president at the time uh, that we started graduate education. And then Sandra House, who was the first recipient of a graduate degree for MSU. Uh, they're pictured here with me. Uh, in the late 60s, like in 68, 69, we offered our first one. And then a little bit more over a decade later, we were right at um, a little bit over a thousand graduate students. And now I'm so happy to tell you that we exceeded the 4,000 mark, uh, 4183 specifically this past fall. What kinds of graduate programs do we offer at MSU? Well, I'm so glad, I hope many of you have participated in my uh, very esteemed colleagues' conversations. I wouldn't have a job if it weren't for the deans of the other uh, colleges because we partner together to offer graduate programs. And as you can see, every college is involved in graduate education at MSU. Graduate interdisciplinary degrees are housed in the graduate college and they also are beholding to faculty programs within those colleges to be able to put together an interdisciplinary degree for students. There are three primary focus areas for graduate degrees. And one is research. A lot of people think that, that when you think about a graduate student, you think about some student you know, working in the lab late at night. And that's true. We do have those kinds of things happening at MSU. Um, the theses that are published in our electronic repository have been downloaded almost 300,000 times. So that means our students are doing quality research, quality work, and it is uh, disseminated widely and it's um, desired widely. Here's a great statistic. This thesis, Iran as a strategic threat to the US and the Middle East and its impact on US policy in the region, that has been downloaded, downloaded over 8,000 times. So this goes to show you that our graduate students' work is making an impact. There also are professional degrees. And these are uh, graduate degrees that are required in order to entry the profession to practice. So as Greg said, I'm a speech language pathologist. I had to get my master's degree before I could practice as an SLP. Uh, we have uh, occupational therapists must have a master's to practice. Uh, physician's assistants must have a master's to practice. Audiologists must have a doctorate to practice. Physical therapists must have a doctorate. So we have a handful of professional degrees that are required in order for someone to be able to practice. Then we also have applied, I, I, I kind of made up this word, applied degrees such as the MBA, where you don't necessarily have to have an MBA in order to be a business person, but that knowledge, the skills and knowledge that you gain through that degree make you uh, more competitive, perhaps make you uh, more competent even in providing uh, professional service um, in your position. Um, so this is the best part. How many degrees, how many, how many individuals has graduate education at Missouri State University affected? Um, we have cumulatively um, given just under 3,000 certificates. I think this number is actually less. I mean, it's, it's actually lower than it should be because I didn't get the final fall 21 numbers. Um, 28,409 master's degrees, 1,073 specialist degrees, over 1,000 doctoral degrees. We hit the 1,000th doctoral degree uh, conferring this past summer, so we're very excited about that. All in all, Missouri State University has conferred 33,412 plus some more probably certificates Think about how, I always get the clint when I talk about this. Think about how many lives we have impacted because of graduate education at Missouri State University. And we don't just do it 
in this incredibly wonderful ceremony uh, in uh, the arena. We also confer degrees to captains at Fort Leonard Wood who are gonna go off and serve our country um, as um, they, this, these are folks in the advanced training on chemical warfare, biological warfare. They earn a degree in defense and strategic studies, countering weapons of mass destruction from us. So they enter their service uh, doubly prepared in order to um, adequately perform their duties. The uh, other picture um, on the right hand side um, is uh, a, a group of students uh, and we conferred uh, certificates and uh, ultimately master's degrees. And this happened with a partner university in Brazil. So we're everywhere uh, conferring uh, master's or graduate degrees from Missouri State. What do our students like, look like? Overall, we are uh, mostly part-time, but that varies from one program to another. Uh, for example, the clinical programs, speech path, audiology, physician's assistants, they tend not to take part-time students, they're all full-time. But then in other programs, um, many of our education graduate programs are almost all part-time. So overall, we're a little bit more than half part-time. We're predominantly female, which is consistent with national trends. And um, in our case, most of our graduate students do come from Missouri. You might think that most of our, many of our graduates, a large proportion of our graduate students come from MSU undergrad programs, but uh, they don't. And we would like to get more of them, uh, frankly. So we're working on that. But still, the majority of our students come from Missouri a little, almost a third come from other states and then around 10% are international. And that number actually has ticked down since the pandemic. And we really hope that, hope that it ticks up again soon. I thought you'd be interesting in hearing about changing delivery modalities. We have 22 master's degrees, two doctoral degrees and 33 graduate certificates offered completely online. But here's another stat. Uh, the university captures data from students who take a majority of their coursework online. So they may not be enrolled in one of our fully online programs, but yet they're still taking a majority of their coursework online. Well, in just not that long ago, in 2009, only 14% of the students were in this category. By far, the large majority weren't. They were in traditional seated classes. And right before the pandemic, it's started, I mean, it's been shifting for some time. Right before the pandemic, it was almost ready to flip. And then at the pandemic, it flipped. And now we're almost, we're about two to one, almost two to one uh, students who are taking the majority of their coursework online to students who are not, who are taking their courses in uh, seated classes. So this really tells us about what students are, in, what today's students want in graduate education. I wanna spend some time now talking about some special initiatives that are going on in uh, graduate programming at MSU. So I mentioned about professional doctorates and how we had now conferred over a thousand. Our Carnegie classification for the university changed in 2019. And so we are now classified as a professional doctoral institution. This was a major deal for us, thanks to uh, President Smart and his team and our legislators, uh, uh, in the encouragement, support uh, from Missouri Department of Higher Ed Workforce Development, our um, mission was changed in uh, fall of 2021, at the end of fall of 2021, and now the state recognizes us as a professional doctoral granting institution. Uh, we currently offer five, and all four of these are in clinical professions, but the fifth uh, the one is now at Defense and Strategic Studies. It was not mandated by an accreditor. We just had really, really impressive faculty and impressive programs. We saw a need and we developed this program. This is one of uh, the two graduate programs, our master's and now our doctoral programs in Defense and Strategic Studies, and they are located in Fairfax, Virginia. They're in the DC area. And if you read our uh, list of faculty members, you would feel like you are reading a C-SPAN program lineup. Uh, you see these are top leaders, very well known. So it's a very impressive program. Um, there are um, two more waiting in the wings, both our occupational therapy doctorate and our doctorate of clinical psychology, a PsyD. These have both been approved all the way through MSU curricular. 
at the state level, and now they are awaiting uh, national accreditation, uh, awaiting approval by our national accreditor, um, HLC. We have two more in the planning stages. And so um, hopefully we will see those come to fruition. We have a lot of partnerships that I'm very proud of. We have international partners with whom we work together to offer dual degrees. Um, so uh, for example, the Masters of Professional Studies, we team up with Ningxia University and Southwest University in China. The students, the plan was for the students to come here and earn uh, do about 18 hours of the coursework here with us at MSU and they engage in cultural activities. We took them water skiing one time, they get to go uh, to museums, let them hear some country music, go fishing, et cetera. And then they do the rest of the degree at their partner institution and transfer it in. Well, when the pandemic hit, we um, that program was put on hold for a while and I'm so excited to say that we've started it back, but unfortunately, they're um, doing it from China. I would really like to get them back here, but at least we have a cohort from Ningxia starting back with us. So we're, we're excited about that. And we think that uh, that has a lot of potential to continue to grow now as the world knows how to address the pandemic. We also have really important domestic partnerships that allow access to our accelerated path to admission for uh, students who wouldn't have that kind of access at their own undergraduate institution. For example, Evangel, Southwest Baptist, those students can apply for and be admitted to our accelerated MBA. Um, we, are, we have one signed agreement with an HBCU, Central State and Ohio, offering those students um, admission to our accelerated paths. And if you don't know what accelerated is or if you've forgotten, students get admitted to that path they start taking full-fledged graduate courses and those courses count back toward their undergraduate degree. So they are able to double dip, if you will, so it makes the path to completion of a graduate degree more efficient. And then we have, uh, we just recently signed one with Westminster College in uh, Fulton. So the pictures there um, illustrate a meeting we were having with our partners in China, uh, with the president at Westminster. And then the picture in the corner is, uh, from a partner in Bolivia where we were actually uh, doing a TV show to promote our partnership. So uh, we're trying to be all over the world uh, in graduate education. I'm very happy about what we've been able to do with admissions. Many of you may remember um, what it was like uh, to apply to graduate school. Uh, we not launched a new application system, it's called GradCast um, in 2018. 11 of our graduate uh, programs have their own central application service. Greg mentioned that I used to be the chair of our national one in speech path and audiology. Um, so what's so nice about this system is that it's a one-stop shop for applicants to submit everything they need, um, everything required to make an admission decision. In the old system, you used to fill out some demographic information in Banner and that went to graduate college, but then you had to correspond with all the individual programs and send them information. So it was very hard from the graduate college office perspective to keep up with who actually followed through and submitted everything and where people were. So this is really nice for both us and the student. And it also allows a tailored, a different application for every program. So I have some examples for you up here. Um, in order to get into our psychology um, experimental track, graduate program, those faculty want to know about their career goals, what the knowledge and skills that the students are going to bring to the program and how that might uh, fit with them. Whereas in our music program, uh, they want to see a video of a uh, prospect like conducting something that he or she wrote. So it's so nice because we can create something that allows each program to solicit the information that they actually need to make their best decision. Um, because we are part of a centralized application service, we, it allows us to cast a wider net. So um, you can see in 2019, we had about 2,600, a little bit more than that applications. And uh, last year we had 3,300 and we just started our news cycle a few months ago. And so we're still counting. So that enrollment increase um, starts with an increase in the number of applications. Another 
initiative that I'm very proud of is some work that we are doing to ensure that our admission practices are maximally inclusive and welcoming. So we, um, I formed a committee with cross-campus representation in August of 2020. They did their work. We had, at that time, we looked at data and found that from some underrepresented groups, we knew that they were uh, relatively lower than what we wanted them to be in terms of our overall applicant pool. We wanted to have more applications from individuals from underrepresented groups. What we may not have known uh, until we looked at the data is that our um, admission rate was for some groups lower than what we would have expected. So um, this committee was formed and they did work to develop um, resources for marketing recruitment. That is, let's increase our applicant pool of individuals from underrepresented groups. And then to really take a look at our admission metrics and our admission processes to make sure that they were maximally inclusive and there weren't any sorts of um, unintended, unconscious bias operating. Uh, those programs now, our programs across campus are currently using an inventory tool to address the practices and the deans um, have asked uh, for at least one action item per year. So this is just another example about how important my colleagues in the colleges are, how they support this. Um, we presented this work to our graduate program directors. We presented this work at the Midwestern Association of Grad Schools a few weeks ago, and we're going to present this work uh, to the Board of Governors in uh, May. So we're very excited. And this really is an important um, characteristic, important addition to graduate education in NSU. Another thing we do, I don't know if you can see this picture, but there I am by Coach Bobby Petrino. Uh, I was very, very excited uh, to get to talk to this group. Uh, we came up with a way um, to think about, well, oh wait, I'm, I'm stealing the punchline. So what do Jason Shelley and Bryce Callup have in common? That's your question. And the answer is they're very successful student athletes. And if you followed our football team and our Lady Bears, you know that that indeed is a correct answer. But they're also among the 41 graduate student athletes we had at MSU in fall of 2022. So what we did is as a result of some changes in NCAA transfer requirements and COVID increased eligibility, there were a lot more uh, graduate students who were seeking to transfer and to continue their sports eligibility um, while they worked on a graduate degree. Well, sometimes these, uh, these students, very capable students, but they just kept their GPA at the level that was necessary to participate as an undergraduate. And that GPA may not be high enough to be a graduate student. It wasn't because they could not have, it's not that they didn't have the capability, it's just that that wasn't the goal. So we worked on having flexible admission paths, different ways to get into a graduate credential regardless, as long as you, you know, commit to doing the work and um, are interested in one of our credentials, we found a way for them to get into a graduate uh, credential. So here we are meeting with the football program. We've done this, the same thing in some of the other programs. As usual, when you're um, motivated to do something special for a group, that ends up uh, offering opportunities to every student. So now you don't have to be a football player. You can be whatever, any student. You may, maybe you had your, maybe you did your degree 20 years ago and you really didn't care about what your GPA was then, um, as long as it met the uh, degree requirements to graduate. So now you're trying to get into graduate school. It's like, uh oh, you know, how do I get in? We have a way. We have a way. We'll get you in and then you do the work. So we're very proud of that. Another thing that we've been really focusing on is, uh, intentional marketing for our graduate programs. We have a CRM, a customer relation. That's that thing that, you know, like if you are on Facebook and it pops up and, you know, they, the Facebook knows you like dogs and it offers you a dog or something. It's tailored to um, meet the customers wherever they are. So we use this to reach out to people who submit inquiries. We drip emails and texts out encouraging them to start an application. If they start an application, they get a series of emails from us saying, please submit the application. And then once they become an applicant, then we have communication that tells them what to expect for next steps. 
we do um, central campaigns from the graduate college, and then we also work with individual programs on their campaigns. So that's about us. Let's talk about you and how you can get involved and support graduate education at MSU. Well, one thing is you can get involved in some of our special events. We have this great event in the fall, the three minute thesis, and it's just what it sounds like. Students have three minutes to explain their research to a lay audience, and we offer cash awards to the winners, and they are sponsored by ClinVest Research. Um, Ryan Cady, the CEO, is an MSU alum uh, of our graduate programs, been very supportive. And so ClinVest sponsors these awards, and then the individual who wins represents us at the Midwestern Association of Grad Schools at their three-minute thesis event. Um, just, let's see, I think it's next weekend, um, two weeks soon, we are going to have the Einhellig Interdisciplinary Forum. And those of you who have been familiar with uh, graduate education in the past know that there could be no fitting, no better fitting name than to designate this as the Einhellig Interdisciplinary Forum because Frank Einhellig was a very long serving dean of graduate of the graduate college at MSU is now our provost. Um, in this, students present research in a face-to-face -face or a virtual format. Uh, this year, we have more than 100 presentations. Before the pandemic, we were up to over 200 presentations. We will get back there sometime. And we would love to have you join us as a judge. I've included um, the link there, and maybe um, Greg um, could drop it in chat. Um, and if not, you just reach out to me. I'm happy to point you in the right direction. And your support through the uh, Onward Upward campaign could provide funding for additional student and faculty awards. We give awards, um, we use that as a really celebrate graduate education day. We certainly give awards to the presentations at the forum, uh, but we also use that as an opportunity to honor the outstanding graduate mentor, outstanding thesis director, uh, and many other student general student awards uh, are recognized there. So, those right now uh, might get a plaque or they might get a very attractive piece of paper saying you won this award, but it would be so nice to be able to offer a, a cash incentive like we are able to do because of ClinVest with the three minute thesis. Another area to, uh, we need some help in um, is the provision of funding for our graduate students. We provide two types of funding uh, from the graduate college. We do research funding so students apply for research, uh, for funding to help them conduct their work, whether it's a thesis or a non-thesis project. And this graph shows you, and I just picked out for the past four years, how much is requested and how much we're able to award from our budget. So before the pandemic hit, we were almost to $100,000 being requested, but we were only able to award 40, over 40,000. And you can see across all four years how the red bar is much higher than the blue bar. So requests are more than available funding. Similarly, we sponsor student travel to conferences to present their research. And once again, the red bar indicates how much is requested and the blue bar indicates how much we're able to provide. So your support via the Onward Upward campaign to close that gap between the red bar and the blue bar. So what about you? What about maybe reskilling, upskilling, learning new things? Want to get another graduate degree? Want to get a graduate degree? So um, we offer, I, I put in the link here to the certificates that we um, offer. Certificates might be a new concept for you. Graduate certificates are typically about four courses. Um, as I said, one third of we offer 100. Um, a third are fully online, and every certificate we offer is subsumable within a degree. So if you don't already have a graduate degree and you want to start with a certificate, then working with an advisor could point you in the right direction for the certificate you want and then ensure that those courses would then ultimately go on to count toward a degree. Um, do you want a new degree? As I said, new master's, doctoral? or you can design your own through graduate interdisciplinary programs. Um, our uh, tagline is that we offer an exceptional value at an affordable price.
Another thing you could think about is what about hiring a graduate assistant or hosting a graduate student intern? Um, provide an educationally relevant experience. Our grad assistants can provide 20 hours a week of very strong contributions to your business. Um, our graduate students are smart, motivated, capable. And um, so we're, this is a new uh, initiative that we're doing. We're working with various community partners on this kind of model where our community partner provides the funding that covers the monthly stipend for a graduate student and a, a, to part, money towards the tuition and fees. And we offer uh, the partner actually a discounted rate toward this. And I would be more than happy to provide details if you like, and you're interested in any of those opportunities. Finally, come visit us. Uh, we have some really uh, beautiful new digs. Um, if you uh, remember, if you had ever visited the graduate college on campus, uh, you may, uh, the word musty may come to mind. It is no longer musty. This is our beautiful new uh, space that was renovated in 2020. The renovation started just uh, in time for us to move to the attic in Carrington, the pandemic hit. We worked from home the entire time the renovation was going on and then we were able to come to these beautiful, um, this beautiful new space. I put my email address in, it's very easy. It's my name at Missouri State. Come see us at Carrington, give us a call. We would love to host you. So um, I'm ready for Q and A and Greg, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and you're gonna come back on. Thank you so much, Dean Masterson. And before we get into the question and answer, um, I'd like to move my computer screen over to introduce our Vice President of Advancement, Brent Dunn, who's with us right now and joined us. Brent, here we go. Yeah, so I'm, before we're going to have some time for questions uh, to come in, but, but this is a plug, a little commercial, uh, and uh, Dean Masterson knows uh, this date. October 29th is a very special date. Uh, that's all homecoming. Uh, but we really would invite all of you to attend a very special event. It's the celebration event of the Onward Upward campaign that will be held at Great Southern Bank Arena. Uh, doors open at 7. The event starts at 7.30. Our campaign chairman for the Onward Upward campaign is a, an alum that you may recognize, John Goodman. And he will be here along with uh, some uh, musical artist that is nationally known uh, and the entire marching band, the entire grand course. Uh, it will be a, a special evening where we show what the university was before the campaign and what it has become because of 60,000 donors uh, to the campaign. And so, as uh, Dean Masterson pointed out, uh, the Graduate College is part uh, of this uh, plan to raise $250 million through scholarships, through faculty support, program support, and capital support. So, uh, it, it's going to be a fun week. Uh, again, it's homecoming week. So, the normal homecoming on campus, you know, we're going to have the parade, uh, Bearfest Village, football game at two o'clock against Western Illinois. And, it will be a blast, but please put down uh, October 29th uh, in the evening. Now let's let's get to some questions. Great. Thank you, Brett. Appreciate you being here. All right. So Dean Masterson, uh, you, you definitely did a good job plugging how folks can get involved. For those of you on the call, uh, if you weren't able to capture that email address or any of those links, please just send us a note and we'll get them out to you um, as a follow up to this conversation. Uh, so I would like to ask a question, and um, for those of you out there, please type away. Uh, but my question is a level set question, uh, uh, Dean Masterson. Professional doctorate, PhD, MD, I think we all kind of know the difference between that. But what are these distinct differences between um, doctorates and what Missouri State is doing and, um, and maybe what some of the, where, where we are in, the, in that scope of, of um, terminal degrees? So um, I actually am going to write a piece on this for um, Mike Nitzel, who's the former MSU president who does columns for Forbes and others. But that question, what's the difference between a professional doctorate and a PhD, is not as straightforward as we might want it to be. So with the caveat that there are some exceptions, in general, a PhD is a uh, focused on preparing an individual to conduct original research and contributes to the knowledge discipline in his or her field. 
Uh, you take coursework, you know, you certainly when you take courses, but the main point is to increase your research skills and prepare you for a life as a researcher, whether it's in a research um, unit or an academic institution where you're going to be engaged in research. A professional doctoral degree, on the other hand, is to uh, give you advanced knowledge and skills or advanced practice. So um, as I said, the doctorate of audiology, for example, you have to have that degree in order to obtain your license to practice as an audiologist. Uh, the, a medical doctor, a doctor of osteopathic medicine, you have to have those doctoral degrees in order to be a physician. So a PharmD, uh, you have to have that doctoral degree in order to operate as a pharmacist. Um, as I said, it's, there are some that kind of fall a little bit in the middle, you know, like what's an EDD? An EDD in some institutions is research focused in other institutions, it's more professional. So you really have to kind of look and see what you're interested in, what your field expects, and then what the characteristics of the program would be at that particular institution. Okay. Does that help? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Anybody else out there have some questions that they'd like to ask Dean Masterson? Oh, we've got one. Yay. Mm -hmm. uh, Dean Masterson, who should we contact about designing personalized master's degrees? And could you elaborate more about the process and requirements? Yes. So, um, you know, if you can't remember anything else, you could just remember my name, but I think this would be a pretty easy one to remember. Instead of Julie Masterson at Missouri State University, it would be Jerry Masterson at Missouri State University because the other Dr. Masterson, Dr. Jerry Masterson, is the Director of Graduate Interdisciplinary Programs. Or you could go on our website and look for Graduate Interdisciplinary Programs and read about these degrees. We offer two. One is the Master's of Professional Studies. This is a really attractive degree for people who are you know, practicing, maybe business owners, um, and um, you have an undergraduate degree, say maybe you have an undergraduate degree in the arts and you have a studio, or maybe you have an undergraduate degree in history and um, you're interested in um, working in a museum. So you have the content background and what you really want is uh, the professional skills in order to be a business owner. But yet you don't have the background where an MBA would necessarily be your best choice. So in the, the Master's of Professional Studies provides 18 hours of coursework and it is just that. It's across all different disciplines. So you'll take personnel selection, ta talent acquisition development from uh, professionals in organizational psychology. You'll take a course in intro to managerial accounting for professionals in accounting. You'll take a course in a business communication from our faculty in communication, et cetera. Then you pick the area that you wanna focus on. So I mentioned a lot of our athletes coming in. They're very interested in ultimately being um, on a coaching staff or managing some sort of sport facility. So their focus area is sport management and they do a graduate certificate in sport management and that all counts toward the master of professional studies. We also have a certificate in screenwriting. I think that's so cool. You get sport management or screenwriting. We have one in hospitality leadership. So you get to pick the area that you're interested in focusing on and maybe honing some additional skills in that, but mainly it's the business leadership. If we don't have what you are interested in already as a recognized standing certificate, then you create your own. And you work with um, the other Dr. Masterson to decide what that would be. Our other interdisciplinary degree is the Master's of Science in Interdisciplinary Studies. It's a lot like the professional studies degree, except instead of having a prescribed set of courses in business leadership, it can be whatever you want it to be. You pick one area of focus, another area of focus. You work with the committee to design the coursework necessary in those two degrees add a research design course, a culminating experience, and that's the MSIS. Okay, thanks, Julie. I'm gonna try something new. This is the first time I've done this. And, and, and with Zoom webinar, we have Connie who's raised her hand. 
and she may not be able to chat with us. So Connie, I'm gonna see if I can allow you to talk. Connie? You're a pioneer, Connie. Give Connie, hi! <laughs> can you... Uh... Can you unmute, Connie? I, th I bet we can, oh, there you go. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can, hi! Hi there, Julie. Uh, you're looking great and congratulations on your promotion. Thank you. I want to ask a question about your new uh, graduate certification in autism. If I was interested in, in pursuing that, um, are you are those courses online or, or um, by Zoom or do you have to attend the courses there? Um, so I'm very pleased to tell you that our graduate certificate in autism studies is fully online. And again, it, you know, if you wanted to, you, you don't necessarily need another master's degree, Connie, but if you were so inclined, um, you, uh, those count toward it. Our um, degree, most of the coursework, I think, can be done online, but some of the practicum still requires some residential work. But for you, you know, given your background and what you've already prepared, you're already prepared as a, as a teacher, then you can get the ASD certificate fully online. Great. Thanks, Connie. And Marie says, thank you for your answer and your previous question, Dean Masterson. Are there any other questions out there from the group? We have uh, nine states of alumni who've, who've called in and represented on this call. So we really appreciate your time. We do have another hand raised. So we're going to give. We're give pioneers. Permission to talk. Yeah, we're, here we go. Victoria. Vic. While Did she's you, unmuting, I'll just brag to everybody that Victoria was a graduate student with me, then she was a, gra a doctoral student with my research partner, and now she is an assistant professor. So she's one of our success stories uh, in graduate education from MSU. Now you can talk, Vic. <laughs> Victoria, we've asked you to unmute. Oh. I probably embarrassed her. She probably ran away because I embarrassed her. But moms brag. That's just what we do, right? Coming up. Here we go. All right. Victoria, we heard you for a second. Sorry, it's not working now. Um, we're now batting 50% yeah. with the uh, experience for Zoom webinar conversation. Any, is there anybody else that would like to type in their question? Or Q&A? Okay. Um, well, for the sake of it, uh, I'm, I'm gonna begin to close. And uh, Victoria, if, you, if, um, if you'd like to connect, I'd be happy to. It sounds like you're you know how to get in touch with uh, Dean Masterson, by all means, please reach out to her directly. But um, uh, Dean Masterson, thank you for your time. Uh, thank you to everybody uh, for, for joining in and being part of this. Uh, Julie, if there was something that you'd like to share with the group that you didn't get to touch on as part of your presentation to add some parting words of wisdom, we'll turn this over to you uh, to, to kind of uh, close us out. I, I think that First of all, I really, really want to express my appreciation to Greg, Brent, the entire foundation um, staff, because we're different. You know, we, when you think about, um, you get an MBA, so you have allegiance, as you should, by the way, to the College of Business. So not a lot of folks get a degree from the graduate college, but in essence, I claim all of you, all 34,000 something of you because we were involved. So I appreciate so much the foundations, including the Graduate College in this and allowing us to talk to people about how they can get involved, not only in the, the content college um, in which they earn their degree, but also just in graduate education in general. And I would encourage you to think of both levels. Um, sometimes you might have a family that he got his degree from one college and she got her degree from another college, but they both got a graduate degree. So we would be a nice compromise uh, to think of in that way. So please uh, think about us, get involved with us and help us support students. 
Thank you, Dean Masterson. Thank you for your leadership on campus and in the Graduate College. Um, appreciate your time this afternoon. We have one more conversation to go, and that is tomorrow at noon. That will be our Vice President of Student Affairs, uh, Dr. D. Cisco. I encourage everybody to join in and to hear um, what student life like is today on campus. What are those traditions? What is happening in pedagogy as it relates to uh, the academic content within student affairs and the impact it has on student life? Uh, so please join us tomorrow. Dean Masterson, thank you uh, for, uh, for your time again, and we hope everybody has a great rest of their week. Enjoy the springtime that we're now finally experiencing here in Springfield if you're calling in from here. Um, go Bears. <laughs>